All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be solving the problem nine to the power of 900 minus nine to the power of 901. So to solve this, I'm gonna first start by evaluating my terms. So we have nine to the power of 900 and nine to the power of 901. And these two terms are pretty similar, except that the exponent for 9 to the power of 900 is 1 less than the exponent for 9 to the power of 901. So the easiest way to solve this <clears throat> is to simplify this as much as we can. And a way to do that is to factor out a term. Well, 9 to the power of 900 is actually a factor of 9 to the power of 901. So all we have to do is rewrite 9 to the power of 901 as something times 9 to the power of 900. Well, we can use property of, properties of exponents to do this. So I'm actually going to rewrite 9 to the power of 901 as 9 to the power of 900 plus 1. And now I can use the exponential property a to the power of m plus n is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So I get 9 to the power of 900 minus 9 to the power of 900 times 9 to the power of 1. So now from here, these two terms have the number 9 to the power of 900 in them. So I'm going to factor out 9 to the power of 900, which is what I said I was going to do at the beginning of the video. So now I get 9 to the power of 900 times 1 minus 9 to the power of 1. And this is equal to 9 to the power of 900 times 1 minus 9, because 9 to the power of 1 is the same thing as 9. Now, 1 minus 9 is equal to negative 8, so I get 9 to the power of 900 times negative 8. <clears throat> now, from here, I said I was going to simplify this as much as possible, and we can't really get the exact value because 9 to the power of 900 is such a big number that we can't actually get the exact value for that. However, what we can get is the simplified value, and we're going to simplify it as much as possible. So I'm actually going to move this negative sign to the front. So I get negative 9 to the power of 900 times 8. And this gets me negative 3 squared to the power of 900 times 2 to the power of 3. We're simplifying these terms as much as possible. So I'm going to use a quick exponential property. I say that a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m times n on 3 to the power of 2 to the power of 900. So I get negative 3 to the power of 1800 times 2 to the power of 3. So this is my final solution to this equation. Now, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and even show this to any of your friends and family. That would support me a lot. I have a bunch of other videos similar to these on my channel. And if you're up for any challenges, I have a bunch of those. So please make sure to check them out. And thank you for watching. Bye. Alright, so in this video, I'm going to solve the equation x to the power of 12 minus 1 is equal to 0. So to solve this, I'm going to first rewrite this as x to the power of 6 to the power of 2 minus 1 squared is equal to 0. And the reason I'm doing this is so I can use the property a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So this turns into x to the power of 6 plus 1 times x to the power of 6 minus 1 is equal to 0. So this gives me two equations. I get x to the power of 6 plus 1 equals 0, and x to the power of 6 minus 1 equals 0. Now I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to rewrite x to the power of 6 minus 1 equals 0 as x to the power of 3 to the power of 2 minus 1 squared is equal to 0. <clears throat> so I can use this property again and get x to the power of 3 plus 1 times x to the power of 3 minus 1 is equal to 0. 
Now, for x to the power of 3 minus 1 equals 0, I can, I'm going to read this as x to the power of 3 minus 1 to the power of 3 equals 0. So I can use the property a to the power of 3 minus b to the power of 3 is equal to a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. So this turns into a minus b times a squared plus a plus 1 is equal to 0. Sorry, this turns into x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1 is equal to 0, which gives me yet another two equations. So now I have x minus 1 equals 0 and x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0. So for x minus 1 equals 0, all I have to do is add 1 on both sides, and I get x is equal to 1. And for x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0, I can use the quadratic formula. So by using it, I get x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 3i over 2. So these are two more solutions. And now we aren't done yet because we also have to solve these. So now I have x to the power of 3 plus 1 is equal to 0. And I'm going to subtract 1 on both sides, so I get x to the power of 3 is equal to negative 1, meaning x is also equal to negative 1. So this is another solution. Now for x to the power of 6 plus 1 equals 0, I'm going to again subtract 1 on both sides. So I get x to the power of 6 is equal to negative 1, and if I take the 6th root, I get x is equal to 6 root of negative 1. which is equal to negative 1 to the power of 1 over 6. So now, the sixth root of negative 1 is, say, the We know that i is equal to the square root of negative 1, which is equal to negative 1 to the power of 1 half. So negative 1 to the power of 1 over 6 is the same thing as negative 1 to the power of 1 half minus something. So now 1 over 6, or I should say 1 half minus 1 over 6, is equal to 1 over 3. So 1 over 6 plus 1 over 3 is equal to 1 half. We know this, meaning we have negative 1 to the power of 1 over 6 and this plus or sorry I should 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3 is what we can rewrite 1 over 6 as. Now this is the same thing as 1 half plus negative 1 over 3. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So this is going to equal negative 1 to the power of 1 half times negative 1 to the power of negative 1 over 3. Negative 1 to the power of 1 half is the square root of negative 1, which is equal to i. So we get i times negative 1 to the power of negative 1 over 3 which is the same thing as 1 over negative 1 to the power of 1 over 3, which is equal to negative 1. So I get i times negative 1, which is equal to negative i, which is my final solution.